alone yeah i'm on a live video so um you called so what's up yeah my friend is around told you a child of like the electrician guy is my friend in the compound Just in case he's trying my number. You can, can reach me through this one. Because I'm on live with you. Later. Alright. Anyway, what do you want? It will warm How do I say it? I'm quite. Um, I traveled. I, I had emergency while we are all. There's a sort of an emergency. Currently in Lagos, and, um, uh, it's been a, it's been a you know. We, I'm having a very crucial meeting with some very top Edo people in Lagos tomorrow because of some um, conspiracy against uh, our history and conspiracy against the royal monarch. So, some of us who have uh, were opportuned to get uh, first class information about the consp all of these conspiracies are doing everything within our power and minds enabled by God and ancestors to be able to avert it before it become a guest to the public. So um, a lot of things are ongoing, still private, but um, in a few weeks, a lot of uh, conspiracy against um, us and the royal house we gradually start coming to the public um, domain. So, but um, I want us to be rest assured that uh, those who the ancestors have empowered on the matter, so will not rest until we completely quell all of the. All the conspirators against our history and the monarch. So uh, it's an emergency travel. I'm quite tired. I didn't know why I last in the hotel now. You know. Well, me looking at it, today is a football match. Uh, I was saying, what the team men me what we are, till we are enjoy life. <laughs> I enjoy life all the time, but I just have to turn them down. That um, I have a live video, and um, likewise, I'm I'm also very tired. So I mean, why I relax it So I haven't said that. Uh, there's nothing to be worried about. God and our ancestors uh, uh, are, in full, are in full control. Well, a lot of people have been sending me posts about a trending topic going on about uh, some set of people who, are, who is into tribe or whatever. Um, if you know me very well, I've been doing my live videos years and years before a lot of people started doing on Benin Matters. So to an extent, I'm almost a veteran. In all of my four, five years on the social media space, if you know me very well, I don't engage in discussing about people individual 
because I don't want to give relevance to some people who are not who are not important. I've been dealing with very important uh, people for the past four to five years who are very educated, who has who is literate, who is smart, who is you know so I cannot now uh, it's not a matter of pride though. Uh, it has nothing to do with pride. I cannot now stop myself low to discuss about one non entity. I would discuss about I won't discuss um I can discuss about his lies. I can discuss about his lies if he's trying to deceive the people, but I can't discuss about his person. May I discuss him via canon? Hello? Hello? Honey here. Oh, yeah. Wrong number. Mm. So, um, I mean, um, it's an over day, I got a lot of people who are not your fan. I You know? So, I can't be discussing about him because, um, It's too small for me to be discussing about. Hello? No. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, don't mind. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> I might just want my back the bit here. The real live video. Yeah, the big one was that one. Yeah, they're big one was that one. Hmm. Dumb. Dumb. So, uh, <clears throat> all right. Um, the, but those who want, who wishes to discuss about him, should just go ahead and discuss about whatever they want to discuss about. They are, see, like I said, we've received secret intelligent reports in the past four to five days that is worrisome very very important intelligent report i'm not going to talk about it but in few weeks you people will start to see it manifest there is a great conspiracy by those on top against us as benin people and most especially the royal house we are doing everything secretly to find a counter measure to find a counter measure for what is to come what is to come will be big when i wrote that article two weeks ago about the conspiracy about the royal house there was a reason I wrote it. When I write something, you know that there's a reason. There's a reason why I had to write it. Because I wanted people to understand that when I'm talking about conspiracy, I'm talking about conspiracies from high places. All right? So, there will be an emergency meeting in Lagos before the week runs out that's why i'm here and uh, i'm not going to talk about the meeting that we are holding here but it's for the good of the kingdom so when i have all of these um, things to think about i can no longer be thinking about um, irrelevant issues along the line during this same week some of us had a very uh, tough historical argument about some Benin people now. This is Yasim Ameaye for now. 
about Omanachia, Nati Obanugu, Ugu Kingdom, and all of that. I remember two years ago or three years ago when I was still using the Great Benin page, I did an extensive I did an extensive um, I did an extensive um, discussion on the Ugu Kingdom versus Benin Kingdom and all of that. So but today I want to I want to discuss about it. Uh, so um basically so but today please we want to i want us to pay very keen attention because i hardly pick a topic if I pick a topic, I pick a topic for a reason. There are some very foolish, foolish Benin people, very foolish, who are hiding under a particular history. Who are hiding under a particular history in order to cause problem in Benin Kingdom. And that is why this live video will be very important. I want to completely. Hello? Uh, it will be a real live video, so I might not be able to take your calls. Whatever you have, you discuss it with them. With that. Huh? Okay, now inside. All right, you don't tell me. Iggy Moto go away, I'll be. Hello? No, no. That, that boy supposed to give you money now for transport fare. Hmm? Uh, no. Uh, if, if you go, man, only apartments in any area. Now, the middle one, if you climb the staircase, the right. You they follow me, they argue. What we stay, you want me to be. On one river, we have a real one. No, the other time, I know real one or two thousand. Why, Gwil? I appreciate, um, I apologize. I have went in arrow while, you know, a lot of things are doing walking in my house. Um, can you help me give um, um, my friend 1,000, please? Thank you. Uh -huh, sorry, I think I'm, I'm fully settled. Um, um, bro, can't, why, can't you be using Benin? Well, there's not. It's a do. The, la the language that we speak is a do. It's not even Benin. Uh, yeah, yeah, but oha. Uh, well, it's not something I'm proud of, but I think I'm more fluent when I speak English. Um, so, Abi Tima Soro, they are some couple of our brothers who are hiding under some aspect of our history to cause unnecessary rancor. And I want to use this live video to bury those age-long fallacies. Those age-long fallacies. Age-long 
fallacies. Some people, in order to feel relevant, have been given from very stupid and nonsensical titles to themselves. In one, the idiots that uh, me and him, we had a very fearsome quarrel. Um, he said his name is Oli Yage Obanogu. I want to completely rubbish some of these people so that they will know that um, their stupidity and ignorance, uh, their ignorance, illiteracy, um, cannot stop Benin for being Benin. All right? Their stupidity, their ignorance, and their illiteracy cannot hold us back. The idiot accused me that I'm a paid palace historian. It is expected that people normally or usually will accuse me that I'm being paid for what I do. It is, it is expected though. I completely understand that. Maybe because of uh, the way I defend the palace. All right. But the truth is, I love my land. And I will do everything to protect the interests of my land. And I don't need to be paid. I have never been paid. I don't need to be paid. Uh, um, Ugu Kingdom versus Benin Kingdom. It is a very interesting topic. And I want you all to pay very keen attention to this very interesting topic that some people want to start using as propaganda. We're going to talk about it. We're going to take it uh, um, and see Golden Heart take out her bag. Leave that guy. I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. I don't, I wouldn't, I would not want us to discuss about that guy's matter on my platform. I beg. Lao, you also me Pay attention to what is most important. Because tomorrow now, some of you now will constantly call me. They tell me, say, eh, the year, say the, there was a kingdom oh, that Bini kingdom was divided into two. There was a kingdom. Oh, say now those one say now then come get Bini. Una better listen now. So I'm going to learn the story. And forget about that non-entity. Someone who is not important. You guys don't make this guy feel relevant. Everybody has to be thinking like a Zodua. See, I will address, if he's lying against our history, I will address those lies. If he's saying anything wrong about our history that is confusing to you, you can bring it to this platform. We will address the lies. But, like I said, Izodua or any of Izodua's platform is too big. All right? It's too big. It's too big to discuss about him. I can't. Yeah, then uh, maybe a lot of you people. Or should I screenshot a lot of uh, our chat? How how I was probably like a mini god to him. How he tapped from my knowledge. So is he not that kind of a guy who are now be discussing his matter? How do you think when we be me botonia? I think that's what he said. That he's older than I am and all of that. But I beg, please, concentrate on this very topic. It's really, really very important. Voila. Exactly. Now, this this is someone that is from Ugu Kingdom. Now, get it very clear. You can't. You are. That's what we want to address. Vod balls. I came. You cannot, you are not from Ugu Kingdom, you are from Benin Kingdom. Ugu Kingdom no longer exists. And that's the essence of this story. Uh, that's the essence of this um, of this story. All right? That's the essence of this to this class. Um, now, listen to this very interesting story. Very, very exciting. After the interregnum of Benin, after the interregnum of Benin, the Oromia came. You know, Oromia gave birth to 
or Bioweka, who eventually became a Bioweka the first, and a Bioweka the first gave birth to many children, many sons and many daughters. The first of his son was called Lizzie. Um, why, why? I want you guys to pay attention to this very topic. It is very important. Don't get distracted. You guys pay attention to this topic. If it is not important, I want to make it even a topic on. Pay attention and let's concentrate on this topic. It's really very important. And don't distract us on this platform. Please. As, until I'm done. Obaiweka gave birth to many sons and daughters. Obaiweka the first. Sons and daughters, a lot of them. His first son was Uwai Huayen. By right. All right? By right. Uwai Huayen is the first son. Automatically, he becomes the next Obarabini, which he eventually became. Now, Oba Uwaekwaen gave birth to just a daughter, Omane Omokbiya. I'm talking about Oba Uwaekwaen is now the grandson of Oromeya. The great grandson of Ogisho Owodo, the son of Eweka. Obawahwain was the first son of Obaiweka the first, and he became an Oba. But he did not give birth to a male son. So instead, he gave birth to just a daughter. The name of that daughter was called Princess Imadeyo. Take note. The name of that daughter was called Princess Imadeyo. Princess Imadeyo now married a Benin, someone from Oedo, and decided a son called Prince Elegbe. Decided a son. Called Prince Eligbe. Let me give the chronology again so that we can get it. Obaiweka had a son who became an Oba called Oba Uwaikwai. That Oba Uwaikwai had no sons of his own. Instead, he had a daughter, just a child, which was a daughter. The history remembers her. To be Princess Imadeo. The Princess Imadeo now gave birth to a son called Prince Elegbe. Prince Elegbe now became a direct descendant of Oba Uwaikwai, but through the Matana blood. Now, Princess Imadeo, the mother, of Prince Elegbe, yeah, that is Prince Elegbe's grandmother, came from a community, a village called Umowo. Umowo now is now called Umowo Nzwagbo. Prince Elegbe's grandmother, that is Iye no Biye Prince Elegbe, came from a community called Umogo. That is a community. Uh, I'm trying to establish some of these very vital points. It will help us during the course of the history. Now, Prince Elegbe, however, is a direct descendant of Obawa Hwain, but through 
maternal line. So he wanted by right to be the next Obar of Benin. The Benin, the Ihogbe, who determined, who will present historically from history, Norioba, that will present it to the Usama. The Usama role is to crown. Omani Ogbegi presents in Uzama or Uzama crown. It has always been. It is, Uzama do not participate in the selection process of the king. It is not their role because they don't know who is the first son of the Oba of Benin or who is the right heir to the throne. Their own is that once the Ogbe had presented it to them, they will crown. But now, there was a problem. The problem is, Prince Elegbe felt that he is a direct descendant of his grandfather, automatically he's supposed to be the next Oba of Benin. But the chiefs understood that Egbiye Oya Oyoba through the Montana line. All right, Oya Egboba, not through Patrilinia Egbera. Instead. They now look for his grandfather, which is about Uakwine's younger brother, which was called Prince Ehemie. That Prince Ehemie is a legitimate, has a legitimate claim also to the throne. So there were now two candidates. Prince Elegbe, the grandson of Oba Uakwine, then Prince Ehemie, the younger brother of Obawa who is a grand uncle to Prince Elegbe. These were the two aspiring possible candidates for the throne of the Ogisos. But it's a problem. What will the Edo people now do to curtail another problem that might create another interregnum? You know, they just came out from interregnum not even long ago. The, the Oromi and Duduwa interregnum of about 70 years. What do we do now to curtail this situation? Then I said, who will eventually will be able to bury by providing, in other words, the seek for the native doctor Obo, to come and provide solution to the problem. Then when the native doctor came, he now said, he now said, one of the most important ritual material for the burial of Obawai wine, whoever that can be able to provide it first, automatically will become the Obar of Benin. He gave them a prescription. Noga meba mo emila naka boko yohun. Noga meba mo emila na aha. It's aha. No boko yohun. Emila, it's um, emila in Benin. It's not. It's not cow. It's us. So some some of you who understand English, us. O x abi o x ox. Then Aha is the weaver bed. You understand? Like the us, the Emila was a domesticated animal in old. Alright? But on so no do you know dick Then they are not like wild. They are wild. They are not like wild animals. So because of the ugly move, they now have their horns are now as thick and big as a, 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 a stem of a tree. That the the weaver bed nedoti aha mistake the horn of this emila as a stem of a wood, or the bokoyo will not build a nest. So emila na ha bokoyo translated in English it means an us that the weaver bed has built a nest on its horn. Whoever that can provide that ritual material, all right. Whoever that can provide that ritual material will 
be crowned the Oba of Benin. That was a ritual material. Now, to the Benin people, those in Benin, it was a myth. They have never heard of whether that kind, they, they have never heard the Fred Agbekan, you relax. The person who told the story, who documented the story, is one of the brightest Orion scholar till date. Late Dr. Aishen is probably the first medical surgeon trained in University of London in the history of Orion. His, his grandfather, Ide Mudia, was the only survivor of the war. Nama, that was not, uh, the British did not penalize or sentence to death Ide Mudia. Ide Mudia, he's the founder of Oben. And Ide Mudia, my mentor's, that's my mentor's grandfather, his own father, Aishem, became the first BTC secretary. That he was the first secretary of, of the palace. And he was also an answer of Ole Arosa. So he came from a long line of historian. So he has documented it. So those umo wunokwa lies that you guys are talking about, it's what I want to correct. There's nothing like umo wunokwa at the time of this history. The original umo wun, it's umo wunehere, which is umo wunozwagbo. And that is what I want people to analyze. And I'll give you reasons. I'll give you statistics why Umo Gunokwa is now seen as greater than Umo Gunokwa. But like I have said, at this time, it was one of the sons of Elegbe that, that went to found Umo Gunokwa. So that means Elegbe was already existing. Umo Gunokwa was already existing. I will explain all of this. Just, just calm down. Uh... Exactly. Late Panasen wrote the most extensive, a full book was written on this matter. And before he died, I had, um, I had interviewed him on this matter. So I have a first-class knowledge. I have a first-class knowledge on this matter. So, now, according to the Benin elders, it was a myth. It doesn't exist. According to the Benin, the people in present day Benin city, it doesn't exist. But they didn't know that in Iye Koreon, that animal exists. All right? And all of that. So then when Prince Elebe was told, and I said, okay, he, he carried a lot of his cultures, it's a lot of his servants, and all of that. And then and the bank on the travel told his grandmother's village. Get on your say you're not pay attention. Iye no biye came from a community called Omogo. Omogo Atiye. That was the original name. Ogi Seva when he got to the village, passing through the Igbe, crossing the Evarue, the Igbe River, crossing through the Evarue, crossing Igbe Hue. Alright? Then um, then um, we uh, are uh, Adana, the five junction at present day Ugoni Ekoriomo, Adana, Adanako. There was a mighty tree, Nana Atiako. You know, it was a very mighty tree. They say it was still there till even in the 80s. It's a legendary tree that's in the five junction where you can branch to that. If you're going straight, whether you're going to Runic Bay, whether you're going to the side of Oben, or going to the side of uh, Umo Wonswagbo, you know, or if you're going straight to Ewesi and all of that. Omowo, that was the original name when he got to the village of omogo that's where his own grandmother came from the maternal grandmother you understand he told those people and told them that all right and 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 the and the elders of the village so they are I talk by my prince. Emilania wa koyo kore, and he saw a lot of all of these animals. All right, it was a myth to them in Benin City, but they never really knew that this thing existed. It abounds in the thick forest of Yekoreoma. It abounds. You understand? So, and they said they were willing to give him when he was ready to return back to Benin. All right. Then the Benins felt that they have cajoled him. 
all right, felt that they have cashed him. So eventually he was given okay, when after some few days, about setting out back to Benin, then they had to, they saw a perfect description. Emilana Ahabokoyon, they actually brought it, get it prepared for the journey back to Benin. So it was coming to Benin. So the Benin now heard that a prince Elegbe Ogele Mie Aemenine. So instead, they just, they just, <clears throat> the, that Adanako that is, um, um, I, I think I saw some, it's inside. That Adanako. That is where Ugo came from. Ewake Bugo. I'm going to give you all of this story. Adani Sewa Ano. Everybody that is going must stop there. That is the heart of Ugo. All right. Um, um, okay, we're going there. So, <clears throat> um, so like I was saying, Anagilid me. Uh, so I don't know the one what we in the game we are in. Instead, in their own and why boy do cool charades, they just look for one Emila. They want Emila. They are now going to nest. They are now more your more your uon uon a big one the horn. They are now going to be on it. They Then they just quickly. Uh, ask Prince Hemi to perform the rights, the, the burial right of Oba Wai Hwai, its 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 elder brother. All right, they just quickly performed it and they quickly crowned him the Oba Benin. So then Prince Elegbe has already got into a place now called Oka. He has got into a place now called Oka when he discovered when the news got to him that Amobabe never do that his grand uncle has just been crowned as the Oba Benin. He felt pained. He felt betrayed. He felt he felt pained. He felt betrayed. He felt he I, I don't know how to I don't know how to explain how he felt at that moment because to him the line of his grandfather has just been cut off. And about why line lines we never going to experience what it takes to be the Obar of Benin ever again. He felt betrayed. At that point in time, where the news met with him, he ruled a line and planted an Ihimi tree there. He created an Enogi. The Enogi is still there to date. And called that place Oka. That place has always been called, but that Oka... He called it Oka no, no more going. Not Nomayo. It's Oka. It's close to the market. Oka no more going. Where the war begins. That's what it means. No more going. Where the war begins. He wrote a line and said that. Oh, okay, I think he not turned. He turned. He not backed Benin. He not faced Orion. Now he came out. He declared a kingdom of his own immediately. He declared a kingdom of his own immediately. He therefore now created a, a sort of a vassalage in a dutie again a go in a a centering camp. Using the Enogi that he created at Oka like a sentry camp to be able to give him feedback should in case Edo Mokobu in a day. So he created a sentry camp. Benin's have always known historically to always create sentry camps. Just like when we created a sentry camp at a place now called Agene Bode. From the Benin world, Ago Enibode. That's a sentry camp. People who wash. They tell Ema Day now. I when I ask Ema, you dare. No, get it. I'm a mukode. All the time, I'm doing a mukode. A century cap from I go in the body. That that century cap was created during the, the time of Benin Ida War. It was created during the time of the the Benin Ida War. That's a century cap. All right. 
Exactly. So he created that at Okanumugwe. He created an enogi. That's why they still have an enogi. That enogi that he created was created by Prince Elegbe. The, the enogi is still there. Was created by by Elegbe. All right. So he created it, and he moved. He moved and went to his Montana grandmother's village, Omogu, where he had gotten that Emila Nakabokoyo in the first place and still there. There became the capital. I want people to listen because that this is where I'm having issues with some people who are not trying to take the glory of another and give it to another. It's although I've never said that Ogu Kingdom does never once existed, never once existed, it no longer exists, never once existed, it existed, but the capital of Ugu Kingdom was at Umogo, which is now called Umogo Nzwagbo, all right, once existed, and it was there, that was the capital, for hundreds of years, for about 400 years, Ugu Kingdom had existed, independent from Benin, and it is the descendants of Elegbe that was the ruler, every first son. So Elegbe had about 11 children. Elegbe had 11 children. The first of his line became the Enogi. Oh, sorry, became, well, the first, is when Elegbe died, his first son became the next Obanugu. All right. His second son was called Olodagweze. He crowned himself. He created, he, he created, he didn't leave. Elegbe never left Umo Wanzuagbo. I don't know what your question is. You understand? So, um, um, he, Elegbe never left there. He, no, there was a capital. Umo, no, uh, sorry, the one you guys now call Umo Wanzuagbo, Umo Wanzuagbo was a capital for 400 years until until Obayahen Buddha, who eventually conquered the Ugu Kingdom, brought war to Ugu Kingdom. And his camp, where it cannot be campy, was called Urewe. Urewe, till even till the 80s, because Obayahen Buddha built camp there, created Iya, had, because he stayed there for a, quite a very long time. There are some there are some things that were replicated. There are Ikun, there are Iya, uh, a Heng Buddha market that was created because he spent some time. Urewe was where he planned, he orchestrated the, the master plan of defeating the Obanugu at that time, which was called Igeon. Igeon was the last Obanugu, was the last king of Ugu Kingdom. Igeon. Was his name, and it reigned during the time of Obayahen Buddha. Now, like I was saying, Elegbe had eleven children. His first son eventually took the mantle of leadership from him. His second son was called Olodagweze. Olodagweze was the left Umogo, the capital, to establish an alternative Umogo, which is now regarded as Umogo Nogwa. So that means every Enogi of Umogo Nogwa ancestrally is a younger brother. To every enogi of Umo Wanzuagbo. That's what it means. That is the first thing I want to establish for people to know. All right, that is the first thing I want to I want to make people know. All right. Igeon was the last Obanugu. He was defeated. He was when he was defeated, he ran to a place in present day Boma, and after some time he came back. Or by Hengoda gave him a, a pardon, all right, and now made him subservient because at the time the war came, the war was so mighty on, on the Umo it was so mighty that a lot of their wives, almost all their wives, ran to the other Umo, which is the Umo Nokwa, and because of the population that left the original Omogun went to populate the another Omogun. It now swelled. When the war ended, 
ibi igbama no pa ni kale yohan and all of that they also went to join their mothers and their wives at what you now refer to as umo will not want today so umo nehere or umo was reduced in size the population that it had or you repopulated the other umo that is now regarded as umo will not want today all right when Igeon was randy defeated, it is even in the records of Umo was Wagbo, or many here at Tohani here, that Owa Amo Bera, that there was a mighty tree. It is, it is, it is, it is written, it is detailed, it's recorded apocryphally. I know for some of you who have been following our stories, I've always told you that most of the stories in Benin is apocryphal. The real story was that the Engudamoko here. Umo ones were born, destroyed and completely vanquished them until they, they had to all of it was Umo Unokwa that was the first community to to submit to the power. I'm, I'm going to give you the updates now. It's because Umo Unokwa was the first community amongst all Inugu kingdom that submitted to the power of Enguda. That is why by Enguda empowered Umo Unokwa. But I'm coming there. Now, I, I, I always say that Bini Ohare do on my temi ya gwee, edie do ya toha. The apocryphal story tale of the original story of Ehenguda, when Ehenguda ya moko ya ya gwee, was that Owa amo okbera, a lot of you have heard the story. Owa amo okbera no kwa, no ke owe, ogi ogen ya, ogi e, umo wanzo wakbo. There was a big mighty tree. That was very close to the palace. Now, this tree was about to fall on the palace building. In order for the, the youths, the women, wanted to hold, they wanted to hold the tree. You know, when my uncle used to tell me that story, I used to say, So, Iran, when Iran am here, they very Iran. He get do or what mock bar? He could make bar mock bar for. Was about to fall on a nogi's house. Then the people didn't want the the tree to destroy their nogi's house. Instead, they all assemble to hold the tree while the tree is falling. So that I found girl. So that, so that it doesn't destroy the nogi's house. Instead, the tree fell, crushed all of them, and destroyed the nogi's house. It is an apricica way of saying the tree. A domani, a domani, Buddha. No, the tree represents a Buddha and his military might. How he crushed Umo Gonswagbo. He had a real Berani attack. That is how we tell. That is how we tell a story. And there's also a story that the, <clears throat> that um, that. It's also very common to even do Umo Wunokwa. The one I just said is the one of Umo Wune, Umo Wunswa. But the one that's common is the pot of good luck that originally the, a, a pot of good luck was given to one of the sons of Elegbe and it was carried and buried at the center. Enyawakene Umo Wunokwa was buried at the center of Umo Wunokwa. That is why uh, uh, good luck started coming. Uh, the, um, a lot of um, good things, a lot of people in other communities started coming. It tells of the story that, yes, Umo Wunokwa wasn't as great as it was initially. It was the people who ran from Umo Wunokwa. That is why the word Oswagbo came from the word Umo Wunokwa. Nozwagbo. Yeah, why did the people call them Nozwokbe? Because everybody was aware of the military mind of Obayang Buddha. Everybody was aware of the military mind of Obayang Buddha that Obayang Buddha's military might can crush the uncrushable. Instead, it was it was stupidity and foolishness that made the Umogun, the original Umogun, I've said that the original Umogun is not Nokwa, that made the original Umogun people to want to engage in a warfare with the uh, with Obayang Buddha's military might. So 
I don't have a umo who knows work, but it was foolishness that when one you are not a bad boy, it's just like me. I will just see the world's strongest man now, as I say, as me, your <laughs> as me, our robber like this. I also say, This guy get chest, and you understand. I say, I want to follow the guy, oh grand, and I know say this guy will feel beat me, but I want to follow the guy, oh grand. So I don't have a Oswo umo who knows work, but that it was foolishness. If they weren't foolish, they were supposed to have ordinarily had submitted to the power. A mind of Obayen Buddha's military. Otherwise, the destruction that was meted out on them, they couldn't have been destroyed as much as they were destroyed. I do not know who knows what we in the Ari in in order to compress it, and I tell you, Omo that Omo Gonzwagbo is the home and was the equator of Ubu Kingdom, not Omo Gonzwa, not Omo Gonzwa. All right, but because when the war came, the Umogun that is now called Nohwa or all that that has the epithets of Nohwa, the bigger Umogun, submitted first, and because of that, Obayenguda found them as a reliable, as a reliable, um, uh, someone you can rely on, on the people you can rely on. In other words, he now gave. The Duke, which is the Enogi of Umogu Nohua, did not give them. There was never any time that there was an Obanugu in Umogu Nohua. The Oba, not the Obanugu, was at Umogu Nohua. Never at any time in history that it was at Umogu Nohua. I've just told you, Umogu Nohua is stealing the glory of Umogu Nehere. And that is the plain truth. Although, because they submitted on time, even before the war, they were given the privilege of becoming the head amongst all the Elegbe established dukes and dukedoms. So the Obar of Benina gave the Umo Unokwa first amongst equal. And that is why he now created the epithet of Obanugu. He's not saying that. He's saying that he's the first, he's the head of all. What Obanugu means is not Oba as a king in, in reality. Obanugu means that he's the first amongst all of the Ugu dukes because he was given the political and the traditional wit amongst every other person. But there is a practice that is still being practiced till date to verify that Umu Gonzwagbo was the original headquarter, was the original the only headquarter of Ugu Kingdom. Adi Kwekbe of all the Ugu Dukedoms till date. Ask. Ask. All right? It's not a bet it's not a matter, it's not a matter of Wesley Egwa if at all. It's not a matter of who knows it better. It's not a matter of who knows it better. I don't know why Benin's always think that. I know this thing better, I know this thing better. It's not a matter of who knows this thing better. There's already a written works about this matter. And someone who knows it, knows it far better than you do, already wrote it. Um, so, I had Kwekbe amongst the Enogi of that are Elegbe descendants. Uh, me as it here, Obemila, the Hindlip, he's still accorded the right to the best part of the meat. He's still given to the Nogi of Umo Wanzuagbo till date as a sign of a respect that that is the home at which every other descendant of a Legbe migrated from. Like I said, it's just like you have um, um, Okaije-san, which is domiciled at Iwa. is the head of all Enigis in Enigi of Okao, Okaogo, Ogie, Awogie-san. Is the head that is 
the Enogi of Ira is the head of all the Enigi in Asian land. Is the first amongst equal. It doesn't mean that uh, it doesn't mean that other people are not Enogi. They have the same right, but he's just first amongst equal. Should in case they want to take decisions. Should the case they want to dis take decisions, should the case they want to take decisions, all right, should the case they want to take decisions, the decisions will be presided by him. He's your cow, Jason. He does, it's first amongst equal. So that's how Umogunogwa Jukdom or Enugi became first amongst equal amongst all, all Elegbe descendants. That is the Ugu. Jukes. All right, but however, another point that we must understand is that the meeting that was being conducted amongst all of the Ugu kingdoms were never done at Umogunokwa because when Ehenguda brought war to Ugu kingdom, he was domiciled at Urewe. He was domiciled at Urewe, and when he had completely vanquished them, all matters of the within the Uku, former Ugu kingdom territories were decided at railway even before now almost all the meetings that concerns it our Ugu kingdom if, if it's to be decided among them must be done at railway and not to move no that is another point that we must notice in our next class, I'm going to talk about all the 11 children of Elebe, how they established a lot of other communities around. Some went to, like, uh, one of his grandson, Ekmenedi, went to Urunigbe. He died. His elder brother had to go and Usi, had to go and assume his body, came to bury him, bury him in the front of the palace of the Enugu of Ewesi. He had he had a powerful spare. Owa won agege no ya agbi no kowe ge ni ge kwenye de, and that is what uh, that is what culminates to Ishoko, the Ishoko festival that has been done in Ewesi in three years. It's a reminiscence of the heroism of the bravery of Kwenye who was a grandson of uh, of. Uh, I'm going to in other subsequent class. I'm going to add unique kind all of the uh, all the eleven children, the, the male and the female. The colonies, how all of them left. Uh, like I've already established, it is his elegant second son, or boy, Umo, Nokwa, Nagiti Umo, Nokwa, Nagiti Olada Gweze, Imagwa Pronoe, Dodan Logo, Kiri, Imagwa Pronase, you understand? See, I'm not interested in Omo Unohua. Get it. In the in the topic stated on top here, it was not Omo Unohua that is the topic. It's Ugo Kingdom. And get to know, I'm from Orion or two. All right? I'm from Orion or two. So uh, nobody has the... If you feel, if you have a contrary opinion as to the story that I have said, you write your own book. Let the Umo Unokwa people, those who are completely deceiving people historically, let them publish their own book. Let them have a book. At least my community, Igbekwe, I wrote a book about my village. So the Umo Unokwa people should also write and so that we can compare notes. A lot of people have written about Ugu Kingdom and also citing that some of the glory that Umo Unokwa now possesses wrongly doesn't belong to them. And I'm a Benin historian. <laughs> I'm not an Umogu Nohua historian, I'm only Ugu Kingdom historian, so it's, it's, it's of concern to us that our history has to be well placed the way it should be placed. And if you have contrary opinion, according to Chino Achebe, he said the only, the best way to answer, to counter whether a lie or truth is to write. Then you write. I've seen two Umogu Nohua historians coming to me that they wanted to publish a, a book. That this is how it is, this is how they do, stating that Idu was the son and all of that. And I've been able to tell them you cannot reconcile the differences because they are wrong. But anyway, let, let me not argue. I'm used to, I'm used to you people not wanting to get the truth because of lies, 
upon lies and upon lies. And that's what is otherwise all about. I've been flogging Yoruba people, Ishekiri people, and all of that for their lies. So let me also carry my cane to flog my own people for lying, for trying to bend story, for trying to if you're So the bottom line of the history today is that um Ugu Kingdom no longer exists. It doesn't exist. It once existed. A Hengbuda vanquished it. It no longer exists. And Obanugu is just an epithet. Uh, it doesn't make him an Oba. Like I've said, um, like I've said before, it is not only him. I don't know why people, some people, for because of arrogancy of history, Obani Hwenye is also an Oba. It doesn't make him an Oba. It doesn't mean that Nyogi Tem Nyogi Sen do because he has an epithet. Yes, because he was once an Oba. He was once an Oba. I, I did a documentary of almost about um, 47 minutes of Obani Hwenye Yedo. He has the appellation of an Oba. Even we have one called Obani Yekiya. If you don't, if you people don't know that that's also an appellation of uh, Chifo Swan. Obani Yekiya. It's also an appellation. It doesn't not make him that uh, in your game, in your game, I do. You know? So most of these things were appellation as a result of the history of the world that is not, that is not longer in conformity with the reality of today's um, history. You know? Uh -huh. <clears throat> so, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I, we started our class early today for for some reasons the reason is because <laughs> i know so now live football match <laughs> understand so eight o'clock now our football match so my only maybe yeah i mean i may have a zegger with live video maybe damn for yeah damn for you as i get a report so i don't know so uh ladies and gentlemen it's not about um i don't feel that that there's anything to be for anybody to be angry about. Um, so a lot of our histories have been well documented. A lot of our historians have done quite um, have have done so much work on this history. I will forever remain grateful to my mentor, late Dr. Aishene Habosa. Um, that one useless boy, not a Baulia or whatever of Umo Unohwa, said, um, uh, who that who the hell is Dr. Aishene Hagosa? Let me tell if the guy is here, probably some of you that is friends, is he said is the only of Umo Unohwa. Let me for the purpose of his stupidity. Let me introduce who Dr. Aysen Ehagosa is to him again, so that you, he will know. Dr. Aysen has written over 25 books. The only Benin historian that has written more books than Dr. Aysen Ehagosa is Jacob Wade Egarewa, that had 33 books to his honor. This is a man who was trained as a medical surgeon. At one point in time, he became the head of all medical doctors in former Edo Delta. Late Dr. Aishen Hagosa. His grandfather, Idemudia, was the only survivor of, he was the head of the Benin military at the Ologbo Front. He was the only one that was not killed, executed by the British Kangaroo Court. Then his own father, Aysien, is the founder of Urban Village. And he was the first secretary. Nagiti Ayabe BTC secretary. He was the first secretary to Obai. He was the first secretary in the history of Benin. Secretary to Obai Weka II. And he was also an Onhonsa. Of Ole Arosa. So, someone who has this illustrious antecedent, when I'm a primary one, when I go back many way you talk, 
nothing. They only have whatever. When they, you that don't have that, I don't know, primary one results you well at there. You don't that you don't know your left from right. Now claim because you come from Momo will not work. Now claim that that Dr. Aishene Hagosa was a liar. What would he have lied about? What, what could he have lied about? He's not the palace historian. He doesn't. Dr. Aishen has written books that I've read that the works were completely against the palace history. And when I go and meet in the uh, because that's the truth. As a scientist, do you know why most times I believe Dr. Aishen's work over most works? Why I choose him to be my mentor? Because he's a scientist. Scientists don't write until they are proofs. He was not he he was the first Benin historian, all right, that came from a scientific field. A scientist does not just write, they will have to inquire the real truth of the matter. They'll have to make their proper findings and investigation, draw an hypothesis before they can draw their theory. They don't just write, they don't write by they must want to draw findings. And that is why when a scientist goes deep into history, they are unique in their, in their form of their writing system. Why I love them? Because I also came from a very strong science background. So I could be able to relate with almost everything that he wrote. I could be able to relate when he was be able to divulge some mysteries, Nedote Taleo, and be able to say, hey, oh, do ya tie, but this is what it represents, this is what it meant. So, Dr. Aisha never wrote any of his works by sentiment. Never wrote any of his work by sentiment. So then oh, I want to illustrate Neme Bag Benier your talk. He's not saying that Dr. Aishen, let's Dr. Aishen, that who the, who the hell is he? No, 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 F.A. Bella, you've not been following me. Maybe this is my first, maybe this is the first time you're following me. And if you know me by nature, I don't insult people. I don't. But when it's small rats, let me get it very clearly. There are people I respect so much, and there are very few people. One of the person that I respect so much, I'm not insulting them, I'm just talking to one person that I respect so much because of what he has done for Benin Kingdom, is Dr. Aishen Ehagosa. Then one small rat is, was insulting him. Anyway. So, if you were in a place where your father was being insulted, and you know, if your father was being insulted, and you know that someone who is insulting he cannot, can omasi i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i i about eight European historians participated in the documentary of the life and times of Dr. Aishen. All right. And how he was restored as a modern DJ couple, Waidea Egaewa. They are not even disputing, Messier Kwase. They can't even dispute because they haven't even read it. Like I said, some, some of my brothers, that some of my very good brothers, that when we had that very terrible argument that day, they now said that they were going to fight that. You know what I told them? I said, in order for you to get the truth, go to Umo Wan's Wagbo. Go and inquire. This is not about the Zodowa. Go to Umo Wan's Wagbo, the very source of the history. Don't go to Umo Wan's 
there's already a sentiment of history hovering around Omogunohua that was passed down to their children, which is what I thought wrong, because the source, the capital of Ugu Kingdom was Omogunohua, and I've established and I've proven it. I said, go to Omogunohua, and the guy caught someone from Omogunohua. In short, I was with one of the sons of the Enoge of Omogunohua, but three weeks ago, if some people were, my wife, Adriko, and I had time, and I, I feel struggle with worry. Why did they be going? I even feel like I'm not even, I'm not even, I'm not even mad about Kanye. I know, I know of that. And I, well, I'm an historian. I'm coming, even if I'm not from those places. <laughs> anyway, I think we're done with this topic. Um, I, I want to formally want to appreciate all of you that have been that have been very very supportive of our program that is coming up by next month, it's February fourteenth, Olui Dance Day. I'm very happy. You guys are most wonderful. Osa Nudazi Venikau. Ihenui. You guys have been most amazing. I have to thank all of you. And uh, like I said... Oh, community educators. Which of the oh, you know, the the truth is, the truth is, I have a property at Oh. When I went to Oh, I was trying to inquire. I was saying that I've read so much about Iye Nuhu, the founder. Iye Nuhu was a woman. You understand? You are born in Arua. You know why? Oh, no, Mudia ye karwan. You know who the the pa the legendary Eliburubu. Wa ma enari Eliburubu. Oh, ma amak bada pa umozo. No, Arwan ya agbi noko. E donati Eliburubu. You know be you ah you know be you umozo ni. You understand? I know there are three, oh, but it's one because it was too big. Yana doga ye and all of that. Um. I hear what you talk about your own village, leave Umo Gunokwa. Talk about. Ah, wah, ah, Gwanka, Kakabo. If you are not satisfied, like, if you are not satisfied with it, tell your own story. Like I tell people, Uzwagbo is U Z U A G B O R. Like I tell people, when the guy was ranting, he said he's coming from. Uh, Holland or Yen or Yen. Now, Zodua does not run, no. Zodua does not run, most especially from historical debates. Zodua does not run. If you feel that I have lied against your history, if you feel that I have lied against your history, come out on a live video. Do your own. Tag me. And I will surely reply in 48 hours. Or if I'm less busy, I will surely reply. But if you want us to take it to another level, like I told the only guy, no, not the only I told him that, well, there's only one only that is in Benin Kingdom, and that is Chief Ejion I don't know of any only but since I don't know your name, assuming that you are actually the only of blah, 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 whatever. He said he was going to come. I told him that. So, we're live video. My own joy is as far as we know what is on that Benin kingdom. We must talk about it. Until we find out the truth. So, 
o kage do ya hen. I walk by ya. And funny enough, almost all of these people migrated from everywhere. Most of these people were in Numo Unokwa, came from, even some of these people that were even arguing, some, one of them said that your original came from uh, uh, Isiemeo. If you are from Isiemeo, that means you originally came from Mu here, at Ikbubaha here. All right. I'm, I'm Igbehwe now. That's my village now in the Yekoreo. But I was told by my grandfather before he died that we originally came from Oredo, Ibiyeme. So every Um, every Benin man or woman came from uh, the heart. The heart, the, the plains of Ogboka. The plains of Ogboka. I am a I am a I Okero Ubodo Okero Ubodero. There's how you say it in this parable in Benin, you know. It is referring to the plains of Oboka. The plains of Oboka was not undulating. So I am okay. I am Ubodo. Okay is hill. Ubodo is valley. The plains of Oboka, which is probably the oldest place it was the first place that a human being was ever found in the entire benin kingdom the, Og the plains of ogboka for some of you who do not know where the plains of ogboka are is the present day areas of um the present day areas of um Ikine, uh, benin prison jive sapler road yaladia where saint matthew yaladia where those were the what we call the plains of Ogboka. It's not undulating. It's a very straight road. All right. Every Edo person evolved from that area of Benin. And we begin to go to different places, from different places. Some we migrated. So I had a week by a winner, I had to wear or Tia, and all of that. So Benin's migrated from different places, different places. Like, for me, I'm originally from Evieme in Oredo at uh, close to Ibiwe there. From there, um, according to the story, I documented it in my book, um, uh, in search of one of their sisters. So my great-great-great-grandfather, Aluge, left with his younger brother. That one, eventually, that line is cut off on him, and so that one left. That's my great great grandfather. He left in search of their sister, who was at um, Obazogbe, Obazogbe Nugu. Oh, and so in in going there, he now decided to branch at Igbewe, and he settled there. And that has been the the lines of the Lamogun family at Igbewe, and which I am part of it. We are originally not from there. Okero Bodo Ro Kenaya Bo Ogboka. Exactly. Where's it now? Okero Bodo Kenaya Bo Ogboka. That we call it the plains of Ogboka. It has no hill. <clears throat> it has no hill. It has no. It has no hill. It has no valley. Uh, Oke okay is hill. Bodo is valley. John Edwin, I don't know whether you're referring to me. I'll go to Igbe page to tell him to stop fake history. Anybody who wants to speak fake history should speak fake history. That's not my headache. And moreover, I have said that that guy's name should not be mentioned here. I have no business with him. He's not the only person who is talking a lot of fake history about Benin. boom. What concerns me? Okay, with that, a monkey face I've been looking to... Ever since Monkey Face started his madness, have you ever seen him? I, 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 I don't think I've mentioned him more than three. 
three, four times. Now, if they call my page, I've never been to his page once. Okay, okay. So, I've never been to, I've never been to, I've never been to any, I don't, it's not, I, I don't have that, I don't have that time. People shouldn't say I'm braggy and all of that. I don't have that time. Be there, yeah, yeah, damn it, you know. Okay. Ah. Oh, okay. You you weren't talking to me, Johnny Bizube. Uh, don't go there. I want to go. <laughs> if you know, maybe you've not been following me, Johnny Bizube. If you follow me, you just know that I'll be the last person to go there. People send even the live video he was doing. I think four, five persons have forwarded it to me. I don't even know the content of what is within there. It is not in my place, but like I said, I don't discuss people. I discuss history. I don't discuss people. I discuss history. If he's, if he's lying there, if it's talking about the history that is confusing, then you bring it to this platform, then we'll trash it. That's how I run my package. All right. I have never engaged in any propaganda. It is not my selling point. All right. It is not my selling point. I don't engage in propaganda. It is not my selling point. So I don't, it is not in my place to add our talent, you know? Uh, oh, sorry. I thought you were referring to me. Uh, no, while John Edwin. So, uh, so I know. So, um, please, on our Olo Dance Day, we are still massively doing a lot of preparation. And I don't know how we can put it on eBay as a matter of fact. But Institute for Business Studies, we are currently working on because we have all the past works. There's a project we currently want to embark on now by God helping us. Our, our daddy was almost, he told me of that work shortly before he died. Then he was now bedridden. He was working on a masterpiece book. He was working, he published one around February, it was like a pamphlet of the assignments that his first daughter, who is also a medical doctor in U.S., he has about his four, four of his children, almost medical doctors in U.S. Then I that, that man not talks, so they say me cannot curse her. I that nobody, they say, who is doctor? I said, of course, anyway, man not talk. I think he, he was, it was an assignment that he was given that one of his, his first daughter was given that um, um, I've forgotten the title of the book. He wrote that February, March. It was like a pamphlet. Uh, I have a copy of it. Yes, I have a copy of it. I wish I did house now for just showing now the copy. That was the last book. But he was working on another masterpiece book shortly before he died. The book was almost completed. So now, Institute of Benin for Benin Studies, we are we are planning to discuss with the family so that we can publish that book. Since, uh, all right. Um, so I, I, I will not be able to tell all the history of all communities, but we are trying, like I said, my major project, I've not been able to embark on it was that every community uh, we're going to set up a research team that is going to go to every communities in Benin Kingdom so that they can tell their story. We have a video documentation about all community, all stories of every community in Benin Kingdom because um, every community is almost losing their true history. So the greatest thing I ever did for my community three years ago was to write the history of Ibehweni Ekoreon. So I have ensured that this history of that, my community, we never, we never, uh, will never lose it because almost all the people, the man who actually gave me one of the most authentic narration 
about the history. I didn't even see him. He was inside a very dark room on your mind. It's bed reading. So, Menato Tai by Omaya no Ta on a fekodua tai 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 so i was recording i was writing when i was doing that project it was most interesting my grandfather told me a lot about the lamogu but we needed to know the story of menaya boy the original owners of that community the egbe laiso all right they 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 they, they, they are direct descendants of the emehi emehi family emehi lines all right that direct descendant of it so he my wow, I still don't know that man, but I think he has died. I probably was the oldest man in my community at that time. You understand? So thank God I was able to take from his knowledge before he passed on. So most of our communities, Emanigile on Hani, we are almost losing almost all of them. So that is why we're taking, I'm going to take pain by God's grace. I'm going to take pain um, to, to try, if God ennoble me, to set up a research team, you understand, to be going for one local government to document every story of every community. I know a sana. The Enogi of Ewebanosa, Professor Greg uh, Akendwa. It's, it's, it's like a daddy to me. I know him very, very well. Professor Greg Akendwa. I know him very well. I know a well Banosa very well. A video of what? Sakbolo Iwodao. So these are. Let's say I should start with Yekoreon. Hey, <laughs> Yekoreon. Oh, oh, man. Ogu Kingdom. Oh, I will start from the very beginning. Oredo. So, we had a part of who's your brother that once walked with me? Who's your brother that once walked? We had a part of it. Did I, I didn't fire anybody recently. Oh, oh no, it's not it's not a video. It's a book. It's a written book, a eh, video. Mm -hmm. Okay, why am I great grand? Yes, like hey, I was going to talk about that. Whole. I don't have this full story. I went to get a property for someone at Uho. All right. When I was, when we were bargaining for the property. So, and I remember that. I've read one time in passing, Iyenu. So, I was not asking that. Ema Iyenu, they took me to the shrine. Very big. Or why The shrine, the, um, the, the stream. It's more of like, Neneze Kane, Nawa Adiawegen, Iyenu, and all of that. They are not asked. Then I try to inquire that how far, bros. Tell me the story. You no, know, say me and my normal self. I must any village I enter, I must want to wait till they saw. Tell me the story of this village. About three or four persons that I met. They say, bros, no, no, lie, you know, you know. Blend a one man like that, and I know you know the town. Understand? Yes, the river is under a big tree. In short, one of my brother, one of my brother, buy land very close to that. You know, you know, you know. Yes, they are from a dope state. They are from Benin. I think there's a documentary about that. I will dub you. I will dub you. I'm aware now. Mr. Amo will put your um, put, put what on my screen. 
So basically, basically, so saying my advice to a do people Agmonden a do Agmonden a temata Ibude ni uniri na maniri do oh yeah. Uh, uh, support panel osa when you no boy do or your cinema in my home we are Zadonia like victory. I said, do that, do that, do that, do that. Boy is low, I do his journey. You know, the point, <laughs> the point I'm trying to raise is this we have a lot of enemies, surroundings, and all of that. Like I said in the beginning, for some of you that were not around, I'm currently in Lagos. I, ha I had an emergency last night for an emergency meeting in Lagos. There is a big conspiracy against the Obarobine. Very big one. I don't want preempt. I don't want preempt people. <laughs> you get some of my guys for face. I don't want to mention their name. Strong men for Facebook. Me the 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 na in suppose na me and in suppose come pick me for hotel now so that the mate I will enjoy with lucky and all of that. I just tell and say I need to do live video. You know, understand? That's why you know even they online. Maybe in the enjoying life. Um He was almost crying last week because when we got to find that the conspiracy against the palace is huge, in few weeks it will start coming out. Um, no, 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 no. We can't say it because we have to. We have to plan our own counter measure. You understand? So the ancestors. I wrote an article two weeks ago. You people remember that article was. Um, Conspiracy against uh, or by worker and all of that. Uh -huh. So it's a way. It's a way and trying to prepare our minds for what is to come. You know, some people they build palace now for inside Benin Kingdom. Well, mine or yes, you know. But we are aware of every single meetings that they have done. All of them. I don't want to mention names. People in high places. We are aware. And uh, God willing. We've studied a lot of our history. We've studied some of the loopholes. We've studied um, some conspiracies. We are very well informed. This time around. We will not lose. So. These are. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. This man is the fourth generation of Agbo Sana. Okay, I'll put, um, I'll put my number now. I'll put my number now so that you can direct me. I need to, I need to know the history of Ienu. You get one, ma one old man supposed to go and go see this week. There's someone I supposed to go and see. Sometime this week, there's a story he wants to tell me about um, Oka, all the Okas. So, you know, no, before then, we are, we are putting our counter measures on ground. I, I'm, I've, been, I've been mandated to brief some powerful Edo sons and daughters 
in Lagos this week. I don't want to give an exact date. And I'm also being mandated to give the way out of what can be done. So, and um, it is only being possible by God, by the power of God and our ancestors that um, some of us are getting to a position whereby they cannot believe our advice. They cannot believe our information. Uh, ah, okay. <laughs> so, you know, I'm smiling because I might mean on my soon we do there. And uh, I do always come out strongly. So I don't think um, we all should be too scared about scared about it. All right. We'll go by the time it it goes out in the public, would have been not very aware of how. By that time, we don't our counter strategies already on ground. Itan of Edo, Avedo Yoko, near Manam Wigbe, Edo Mugbe, Yanke Yoko. One of the one of the frontiers of the imperialism of the Edo people. Edo people never went into any war in Russia. Edo we prepare their military for months. Before they will go to war, and that was our we, the, that was our impediment during the British eighteen ninety seven. The war was sudden. We have not prepared. We do you eternal. So we don't rush into war. We take our time. We observe. <laughs> we observe. Then we plan. So, so all of these things, me fool my head, all of these things, when I, uh, when I see truly threats from high places, when I meet a challenge of high places, threats from high places, when I see all of these cascades of big problems, then do you think, uh, okay, Parable. Okay. Anyone? Do you think I will not be bothered about one non entity? Oh, no. So. Uh, it's an over that we it 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 Ah, yeah. <laughs> so, something like that. Uh, you understand? <laughs> so, but the reality, the reality of the matter is this. Thank you, Effie Bella. Maybe you've not been following my show. My shows are exciting. We